In this tutorial, I want to discuss option two of manually creating your own spreadsheet and putting your own data in. Let's say you have a print collection and you want to be able to lend books out to the public. Uh, this may be a good way to inventory your books and to be able to lend them. So first thing you want to do, do is go to Google Drive. It's drive.google.com. Then you want to go to New and Google Sheets and that will open up a new spreadsheet. I've already created one and I called it book collection and I show, I'm going to show you with this spreadsheet how to set up your uh, spreadsheet so that you can begin uh, entering titles for books. You'll notice that I've chosen a few access points that are going to be searchable. In some cases you have to concatenate certain fields so that it takes up less space. Uh, I would recommend having no more than six searchable access points when you set up the catalog. The reason being is uh, each access point has its own search box and the data is displayed horizontally uh, as a row in a spreadsheet. So the more search boxes you have, the more that patrons will have to scroll. So usually no more than six uh, is good for searching on a desktop or a laptop computer. You'll notice what I've chosen to include here. Uh, I want to make the author of the book searchable, the title, the publisher, the year of publication, the subject heading, and check in and check out. I'm also going to include the patron name and the due date, but I'm not going to show these two columns on the public view. Uh, underneath uh, each one of these access points, I have to choose what kind of filter. There's a website that you can go to, and I'm going to include uh, the link to the documentation in the description for this video, and also on the how-to tutorial website, uh, and it's the complete documentation for Awesome Table. Uh, there are a lot of applications with Awesome Table, not just a library catalog, but I'm giving you kind of a condensed uh, view of how to use it for a particular application. Under Standard Filters, and I'll include a link as well to this particular page, you'll see the different types of filters. So for most access points, you're going to want to use a string filter where you would be able to type in a certain word and it would retrieve it. Uh, you'll notice as well there's a number range filter. Uh, that may be helpful, let's say, if you wanted to create a filter for the year of publication. Uh, that would help your patrons to narrow down books that, for example, have been published in the past five years. Uh, there's also a way to use a date filter, which is not necessarily helpful for uh, a library catalog, but for other applications it may be. And there's also a, a category filter. The category filter is what we're going to use uh, to show if a book is checked in or checked out. So what I did with my spreadsheet is I typed in top of the columns the title of each column and this is going to appear in the public and then I typed what kind of filter it is. Uh, you'll notice I use mostly string filter uh, but in the case of the date of publication uh, let's say I'd rather use the date filter. I'm going to use number range and what I'll do is I'll just copy number range filter and I'll put number range filter here. I'm going to go and uh, select the right type of filter for each one. Most of the access points that I'm going to be using will be using the string filter. The only exceptions will be the check in and check out that's going to use a category filter. And the year of publication, we're going to make that a number range filter. As with an Excel spreadsheet, you need to make sure when you're including numbers, uh, you want to change the format so that it's set up to display a number. I'm going to highlight the column, then I'll go to Format, Number, and you see under More Formats that there is a More Date and Time Formats. I'm going to set it up so that it only shows the year. I have the year here. I'll click on the date and delete. I'll click on the month and press delete. And now I'm going to apply. What that does is that treats each one of the numbers that I type in here as a year. It will not format it as, let's say, 1-1-2005, but just 2005. Uh, that's very important when you are setting up your spreadsheet that you go to format and you make sure that you have a, a year date format. Now I'm going to begin uh, cataloging 
my first entry. So I'm going to WorldCat and I'm going to open up a book here. Uh, in, in this case, The Rise of the Creative Class. I'm going to uh, copy this. I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet and under title, I will paste this information. I'm going to go back and look for the author. I see the author is Richard L. Florida. So what I'll do is I'll type in Florida Richard L. And then publisher is Basic Books. Year of publication is 2002. And the subject headings. I see one of the subject headings is Creative Ability Economic Aspects. Now what you can do is you can uh, type in your subject headings. And if you want to add additional ones, put a semicolon. And then go back and add other ones. Now under the check-in category, and I want to say checked in and I'm going to leave the patron name and the due date blank. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to make the formatting look the same just to make it easier to read. So now I have the beginnings of my own library catalog. What I want to do now is I want to share this, uh, make this public. You can either select this link here or get a shareable link and it just copies it automatically to your clipboard. Now I'm going to go to my library catalog and I'm going to have to create a page and embed the spreadsheet. In Google Sites, I'm going to click on the Create a Page button. We'll call this Book Collection. And by the way, if you want to separate your ebooks from your print books, that's completely up to you. Now I'm going to press Create and my page is ready so I can begin typing here. What I'm going to have to do is go to insert and then go to more gadgets and now I'm going to search for awesome table. I'm going to select awesome table and now I'm going to uh, select new. Now I will paste the URL and say this is a public spreadsheet. The reason I had to make my book collection spreadsheet public is so that it can be read by uh, magic table. Be sure that when you're setting it up that you uh, make sure that you have only the things you want to be seen by the public. I see that columns A through F are things that I want the public to see. I don't want them to see the patron name or the due date because that would violate the confidentiality of the patron. So I want to make sure when I set up the awesome table that I'm only looking at columns A through F. And you see the range it says A1 through H. I'm going to change this to F. Now I'm going to press save. I have to enter a name for the spreadsheet. We'll call it book collection. Press save. Uh, now on the display, I'm going to have to choose the width. I'm going to leave it at 500. Uh, for the height, I'm going to make this 700 pixels. All right. Be sure that you press save if you see the save button. I'm going to uh, disable the border around the gadget and the display title. Now I'm going to press OK and save. It'll take a while but it should show you the author, the title, the publisher, year of publication, and subject headings. It also says here that it's checked in or checked out. Now once I have several books here I can begin typing in uh, author's name and it, it will just show me uh, particular authors. So this author's last name is Florida. Let's say if I typed in Smith I'm not going to see any results here because I just have one result. So it omits um, things that don't match with your search. And you see the different types of filters that I used. Uh, with the year of publication, I can change this if I have multiple books. I can type in subject headings. And you see that there's the category filter for checked in. Uh, what I'll need to do is I'll need to create a record uh, on the back end and have it to say check out. Go back to the public side and you see that's an option now. That's how you go and you can create your own spreadsheet with your own records in it. And like I said earlier, the two last columns are things that I don't want the public to see. So I'm going to omit those when I set this up. Uh, what I can do is if I want to check out a book to a patron, um, I would go into the back end, I would go into this spreadsheet, and I would s select checked out, 
So let's change this from checked in to checked out. Type in the patron's name and the due date. All right, and just click anywhere and it automatically saves. And then if I refresh the page, I'll see that the book is checked out. Now, if you want to uh, set it up so that you can see the due date, uh, you can do that. Just make sure that you know the patron name is something that stays on the back end, that it's not uh, viewable to the public. Uh, what you would do is you would change the range of um, columns that are viewable to the public. And this last one, uh, you would just leave as a string filter. That is a brief overview of how you set up your own uh, searchable catalog using Google Sites. Again, what I did was I went to drive.google.com, created a spreadsheet, then I went to uh, the Google Sites, created a page, and I inserted the gadget, typed in awesome table, and set it up so that I can show to the public what I want them to see. So I hope this helps you in creating, inventorying, and making your library's collection public. Thanks for watching.